welcome back to What's Cooking with Cali Flour, where we bring simple, creative, and very healthy and delicious recipes made with our cauliflower pizza crust. And every now and then we get to have a really cool person come into the kitchen with us. And today we have our friend Thomas DeLauer. What's going on? Thanks and, for having me. Okay, so I love having you on the show because not only do you have really creative recipes and you're gonna love the Mexican pizza that we're making today, but you're also incredibly intelligent. And you teach me something every time you come on. So I'm ready to learn and I'm also ready to eat. So let's start making a Mexican pizza. Totally. All right, so those of you that may know my story know that I was overweight at one point in time and I have no. to say that Mexican food probably had a little bit to do with that. But I still like Mexican food. <laughs> Who doesn't like Mexican food though? <laughs> the point is, is that we really, when you're on a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet, a lot of times with the exception of like fajitas, uh, you just have the fajita veggies and the chicken and stuff, you really get to miss out on Mexican food a lot. That was one of the things that I missed the most. Um, now I will say, you know, full disclaimer, this has refried beans in this recipe, which have some carbs in them, but if you go easy on them, it can still be a totally ketogenic recipe. Um, yeah, well, it's good to have a light layer anyways because the crusts are thinner. Exactly. So Totally. Yeah. So basically, so what we are doing is making a Mexican pizza. And if you've ever been to, you know, Taco Bell, they have their double stack kind of Mexican pizza, which yeah, is, you not know, so good not for exactly the good. Line, no, but right? this concept is sort of adapted from that. It's like, okay, how can you make fast food that still kind of tastes like fast food, but isn't fast food quality? <laughs> I love that. No, I mean, and it's simple because the crusts are pre-baked. So exactly. you're not spending a ton of time in the kitchen simple not quite as fast as going through a taco bell drive through but much better on the body yes it's gonna well it's in the long run it's gonna be a lot faster because your life is gonna be in front of your eyes versus being sick yeah <laughs> and you're gonna move a lot faster because yeah. you're not gonna have all those excess pounds okay so the first thing that we're gonna do with this is we've got two crusts here so you see ordinarily we just have one pizza crust but in this case since we're gonna be stacking it we're gonna have two so one piece is just going to be what's gonna be the top layer okay. altogether so we're gonna work with this piece first and in lieu of sauce like you would ordinarily do with a pizza today we're using refried beans that are black Ooh. so the thing with the black beans is they're much 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 more nutrient dense um, a good rule of thumb to follow whenever you're dealing with any kind of legume or any kind of vegetable is actually the darker the color, the more nutrient dense that it is. It's, it's that simple. Oh. You know, you've got more stuff that's being packed in there. So um, black is typically healthier than pinto then? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And you say about the same fiber content, but you have a little bit more in the way of the actual uh, folate and a little bit way of the, more of the way of the, excuse me, the flavonoids that are going to help you out a little bit too. Flavonoids. So you don't have to go super crazy on this. I love the big words that you use, by the way. Drives my wife crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to leave it about like that. Now, these refried beans in particular are a little bit chunky. Sometimes it depends. Sometimes you get them where they're like really pureed. The more pureed, obviously, you can go with a little bit of a thinner layer. I'm going to keep them a little bit more of the whole bean in there just because it's awesome. Okay. Well, party. And then we've got some good old-fashioned pico de gallo. Oh, yes, please. Now, one thing you want to be very, very careful with when you're using the pico, pico de gallo is don't let a lot of the actual juices from the pico de gallo get through because it's going to make the crust really soggy. Oh, good point. So you, you want to just make sure you're just kind of sprinkling it on. Keep it chunky. Exactly. That's cilantro. Oh, my goodness. Cilantro is also, you may not know this, so even though pico de gallo has a fair bit of salt in it, the cilantro in it is such a powerful diuretic that you actually cancel out a lot of the salt from it. So it's mind but blowing. The other thing is like salt gets such a bad rap, you know, and if you're using good, like wholesome food and predominantly organic food, usually it's using good quality salt. That's not just cruddy iodized salt. You usually want to avoid like this, the, the cruddy table salt table that has salt. much iodine in it because it's been demineralized. It's pure sodium. And that's what we call, it's called unopposed sodium. So when you have minerals in general, you have things like sodium, you have potassium, magnesium, all of these things. They all balance each other out. And if you have too much sodium and not enough potassium, that's when you get bloated, that's when you get puffy, and that's when you get that water retention. But if you're balanced with that potassium, you're balanced with that magnesium, that's not gonna happen because you're, you're in check. You're in check. You're not gonna have the blood pressure issues. You're not gonna have, and it's common, it's just a common misconception that salt in general is bad. But usually if you get good quality ingredients that have wholesome salt, you're gonna have enough of a mineral balance where you're not gonna have that issue. I love that, so, I love it. Who wants to feel bloated? And yeah, who wants to give fun. up salt? Neither of those works for me, so this is, this is very good news. Totally, exactly. Okay, and then we've got a little bit of chorizo here. Now you can use you know, a soy version if you wanted to use, say, the plant-based crust and make this totally a vegan version. Okay. But in this case, we're not doing the vegan version, we're doing the full-blown. We are going meat all in. So it's chorizo here. Go as heavy on it as you would like. I'm not gonna go super heavy because it will weigh the crust down. We don't need a whole lot, but this is gonna give you that extra flavor. That looks so good. And the thing is, when you're on a ketogenic diet, 
you want to get the higher fat cuts of meat. It actually is going to help you out a little bit more because then you're getting the saturated fats, which mind you are not as bad as everyone plays them out to be. You're getting the saturated fats that actually have a little bit more of a metabolic component when you're in ketosis. Awesome. Saturated fats get burned for fuel a lot easier in ketosis than actually monounsaturated and polyunsaturated, believe it or not. I had no idea. So. <laughs> I'm going to have to like watch this video again just to relearn this stuff. I know, you're, kind of looking, like you're looking at me like, so much information. But just it's... make the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is fantastic though because I... I love to have healthy foods in my life, but I don't have the time to do all the research. So I'm just going to listen to you and watch you and have you tell me what to eat. So, Well, you're up in um, California. You guys are based up in Northern California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, grew up, Amber and I grew up in Northern California. I grew up in Sonoma. And it was like, I will hands down say that it is the best Mexican food in Northern mm. California. Like it is such good Mexican food. And it's one of the things that, you know, we miss because we down here in Southern California. There's some good Mexican food, but... I don't know, I guess I have to tout my, my little hometown heritage here and say that Northern California, uh, Mexican food's pretty darn good. I'm going to agree with you for yeah. that. Absolutely. <laughs> so we just lost some subscribers. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> but, okay, so this is almond uh, cream cheese. Okay, now two different things that you can do here. We can go and go with regular shredded almond cheese. Okay. Um, the reason I'm using almond cheese is even when you're doing a ketogenic style diet, keep the dairy to a minimum. Dairy is very, very hard on the body if you're doing it in copious amounts, okay? Small amounts are okay, Small, but when you're trying to just control it a little bit, um, that's, you just wanna make sure you're not just going overboard. So whenever you can, cut it back. Cut it out. Um, I don't recommend, you know, you don't have to cut it out entirely at all. In fact, you know, these crusts actually have a little bit in it that's mm -hmm. to actually give it some structure, but you don't have to be loading up with regular full-blown cheese on top of your pizza if you don't have to. So yeah, I like this. And it, that stuff tastes really good too. So it's not... Yeah, it's awesome. Oftentimes people, at least I know I used to to have the mentality if it's if it's kind of an off not off brand but off ingredient it's just different it's a replica of what's an original I would used to think it would not taste very good yeah totally wrong so this almond cream cheese which you've probably seen me use in other videos I'm just plopping on there so that once I actually put the, uh, the top layer on okay. it's just gonna kind of squish it together and it's gonna end up being really really tasty and give it kind of a creamy texture so I'm going to wipe my hand off really fast. Oh my goodness. I'm in Mexican heaven right now. We have Mexican food at least three times, three to four times a week Whoa. in my house. Well, it's something that like all my kids will eat. So we do tacos, we do tostadas. I use these to make one big taco uh, and quesadillas. You can do quesadillas. That's a good idea. I have not made this yet though. I'm actually, my kids are going to freak out about this. Yeah, this is awesome. The trick is you have to you cook it a little bit longer because you really do want it to get a little bit crispy and then you have to let it cool before you cut it otherwise it'll flop together you gotta yeah. let it oh. get it crispy and Perfect. so the sour cream is going to be used later um we'll put that as a little dollop at the top this one oh. i actually i damaged this crust earlier because i was man don't lie it. you took a bite out of it yes and then i'm serving it to everybody <laughs> gonna give everyone my cooties so all we're gonna do is just grab the pan here Carefully slide it on. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to use a spatula. It's a little heavier because of all the toppings, so you got to be careful. Yeah. If you want to do me a favor, I've grabbed that. Slide it under. Yep. This is teamwork here. Perfect. There we okay. go. Okay, so, and before I put it in the oven, I'm actually going to go ahead and do one thing, and this is just to make it look a little bit prettier. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put another little layer on top. All right. So instead of having it be like a quesadilla style, we're going to actually make it literally like a double decker. This might be a creation that we use a fork with, and I'm totally okay with That's that. That's totally fine. Absolutely. Yep. This is uh, giving Taco Bell a run for its money. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, they're going to be calling you guys up and being like, hey, can we get some crusts from you? <laughs> Absolutely, Taco Bell. Let's get America healthy. Love it. Go ahead and put a little bit more trees on top. A little bit more of the pico. The reason that I put it on the pan first is because it, it's going to be pretty heavy and it's a lot easier to get it on the pan now before it's uh, oh, super, yeah. super heavy. Absolutely. Okay. And since I'm not using regular almond cheese that you can sprinkle on top, I'm going to forego the actual cream cheese on top and just leave it like this. So I think we're in good shape now. All right, we can put a dollop of sour cream on when it comes out. Totally. Okay. So this is going to go in for a good 7 to 14 minutes, depending on how many ingredients you put on there, just so that it gives it plenty of time to still let the crust get crispy. So we're in good shape there. We're at 400 degrees. All 
All right, we've been patiently waiting for this Mexican pizza, impatiently waiting on my end, to come out of the oven. It smells like it's ready, so I think maybe we should go check it out. Yes, let's check it out. All right. We're looking pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. So what we have to be cognizant of here is it's kind of a delicate balance of cooking it you know, too much, but also making sure you cook it enough to get crispy. Um, so it was cooked at 400, so it's definitely cooked at a higher temperature. Okay. You see, it definitely looks awesome. One of the things we do have to do, we have to make sure we let it cool for a little bit, otherwise we won't be able to actually cut it up. It's gonna fall apart. So it's very, very important because you've got so much stuff stuffed in there and stacked on top that if you were to cut it right now, it's gonna all kind of mush apart. Granted, this is something you're probably gonna eat with a fork. It's not gonna eat like a normal pizza. Absolutely. Um, but let's give it about two minutes to cool. All right, so now that it's cooled down a little bit, right. we are in a good position to be able to transfer it over to the cutting board so we can slice it up, add some pretty things to it, and make it awesome in and our mouths. eat it. Okay. Oh my goodness, I gotta tell you, Taco Night might have to take a back seat to this in my house because this looks really incredible. Dang. It's still gonna be a little bit fragile, so just make sure you're, you're careful when you're putting it into your cutting board or anything like that. Ta -ta -ta. And we're going to be cutting it up into chunks anyway, so it's all good. Perfect. We've got some toppings we're going to add on to it here too. Yeah, so here we've got our nice alpha linoleic acid coming from our avocados. You know, so alpha linoleic acid is a nice balanced omega-3. but We also have some good different fatty acids that are omega-6s that ordinarily, whoop, that one broke. Tastes the same. Ordinarily, I'm not a big fan of having high amounts of omega-6s, but there are certain kinds of omega-6 fatty acids that are really, really important for the body. Avocado is being one of those. Avocado oil is also one of the easiest oils to metabolize in the body. I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that. Oh, perfect. Love some avocado. And it adds some green to our pizza here. Yeah, it makes it look a little less masculine. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so, and I love avocado, so you know all the time. And then sa sour cream. So here's something cool. Have you ever heard of uh, labneh before? I have not. Okay, so Labneh is spelled L-A-B-N-E-H. It is a, a Lebanese form of sour cream, and it's significantly thicker, and it's extremely cultured. So there's a lot of probiotics in it. So you end up having like something like 80 to 90 uh, billion CFU of actual probiotic bacteria that are in Labneh. Wow. So you can use Labneh or sour cream. It ends up tasting about the same, but you're not going to find Labneh in the regular grocery store usually. You're going to have to go to a, either a specialty store Just or Whole Foods or something that. like that. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, we do have regular sour cream, which believe it or not, although it has dairy in it, it is still cultured. So it has a fair bit of probiotic bacteria in it, which is going to help us out a lot. Nice. Plus, it's going to make it look really nice and pretty. I'm just going to dollop it into fourths here. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good. We'll do one in the middle just to make it perfect. All right, do you want to do the honors? Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Digging in deep here. Oh my goodness. This is like a mixture of a pizza and a casserole. Yes. I got to tell you, it smells, if it tastes as good as it smells. No, I, I, I put gonna, it kind of close to the edge there, so it's going to. I'm sure your dogs would appreciate they, it They were like, off. keep it it's, closer there to the edge, please. Right. Good job, Dad. All right, I think we've got oh, six, six good we slices bean, here. Bean down. Flying bean, a little flying piece of chorizo. I think we might need a little spatula to get this on a plate. Yeah, we've got one right here. All right. I'll let you do those honors. Oh. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, no, it's falling. Who knew a pizza crust could do all this? I'm going to take this one. It's easier. It's cut up a little bit better. There you go. I just want you to see this real quick, guys. Like, this is so awesome. You're going to get a little messy when you eat this. Oh, messy is good, as long as it tastes good. Delicious. Just serve a couple of those up. I'm going to wipe my hands off because they're filthy. All right. <laughs> you need a fork. You definitely do. Grab one. So yummy. So yummy. I'm going to devour this. All right. Do I get to go first? You get to do it. This is so exciting. I have not eaten lunch, so you might have to find another plate for yourself. I'm just <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is going to be a big bite. This is not going to be pretty. I'm, I'm going for it anyways. 
Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the attempt mm. without a fork. So so good. Nice to have you try this. Okay. Go, go for Here it. we go. This is gonna be messy. Mm. Absolutely delicious. All right, so you get you get this this aftertaste that is amazing. It's like you you get the initial bite that has like almost a little bit of a, a zest to it because of the mm -hmm. uh, the actual pico de gallo on it. Mm -hmm. But then you get hit with it again because of the red pepper that's in that crust. Mm. So it's like you get two layers of spice in it that just hits you like a freight train. And it's like a good spice. This is not like if you have any sort of sensitivity to like like really spicy stuff. This is like a level two, right? It's, right. Yeah, it is. It's, it's different. It's, it's it's rich. It's like a rich spice instead of just a, like spicy one where you feel like you need to drink a glass of water. That is amazing. You guys might just have to like come back and finish this video later. Huh? Yeah. It's so good. The, the texture on this. This is probably the thing that you guys are going to like the most. Is the texture is unbelievable. So you get just a little bit of crunch from the crust. You get a little bit uh, kind of that smooth texture that you get from the beans and also you know, the avocado being added onto it. And then you actually get the volume and the actual structure coming from the chorizo. It's like a perfect balance. Like it's so filling. Like this pizza will probably end up feeding a family of four and really actually fill them up. Easily. Because like one bite and I'm already like, whoa. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, it's incredibly filling and incredibly healthy and it's just I, we've done a lot of different recipes with Kelly flour I'm not even joking this one is my favorite awesome this is my favorite today I win you win Thomas not only have you made another incredible creation for us but again mind blown with the facts that I know now about our crust and the toppings and I don't know how you know all this, but I'm glad that you are a friend of Cauliflower Foods because you can teach us, you can teach our Cauliflower family, and hopefully we'll have you back on the cooking show soon. Awesome, we'd love to. So as always, make sure you comment and let us know what kind of videos you want to mm -hmm. see in the future, what kind of recipes you want to see, or if you just have some flat out crazy ideas that you'd like to see us whip up in the kitchen. So keep it locked in here with Cauliflower Foods. See you guys soon. Till next time.